I've been using this old food dehydrator to dry my filament for years. Now I cut out the center of the trays and I can stack three spools in here at a time. I'll throw the little deskin packs in there as well just for a recharge. I've been getting by with it, but I can't print from it. This filament dryer was sent to me by Fix Dry just to do the review. They aren't paying me for this review and everything I say is of my own experience with using this dryer. Now this particular model is the NT1 and it will hold two one kilogram spools of filament or one three pound spool. Now that can come in handy on those long prints or when you're running a print farm. So why does filament drying matter? First off, let's talk about what happens when your filament absorbs moisture. Most filaments are hydroscopic, meaning they absorb water from the air. This might seem harmless, but even a small amount of moisture can cause big problems. Some filaments absorb more water than others. If you ever had PLA that was just so brittle it broke at every slight bend of the material, that's a clear indicator that the filament is damp. PETG, ABS, ASA, and TPU, they all absorb dampness from the air at a higher rate than PLA. Your carbon fiber filaments do the same. New factory sealed filament doesn't mean it's dry filament. Even if it comes with a small desiccant pack, doesn't mean it's dry. In fact, the desiccant is almost always oversaturated by the time the package is even opened. One of the last steps to manufacture a filament is to wash it by running it through a water trough after extruding it to solidify it and then winding it onto the spool. So let's go ahead and take a look at the Fix Dry NT1 and see what's in the box, check out the features, and put it through a test or two. We have the base with the power cord attached, a clear cover with 10 ports for directing routing to the printer, three in the top front, three in the top rear, two in the bottom front, and two in the bottom rear. In addition, the cover has a series of vent holes at the top for the damp air to escape from rather than having the condensation drop back onto the filament as the unit cools. Always a good thing. A piece of Teflon tube so we can put those ports to good use. A heat shroud to evenly distribute heat flow without melting or deforming the filament. And of course the instruction booklet that includes a handy chart for recommended drying times and temperatures for specific materials. The NT1, as you see it, is currently priced at $79.99 on the Fix Dry website, slightly less than the competitive units in its class. I have a link posted down in the description. Assembly is simple and straightforward. Place the heat shroud in the center of the base. There are four posts on the bottom side of the heat shroud that fit perfectly into these four pockets on the inside bottom of the base. The rollers are still completely accessible and function as they should so that the filament will roll freely when printing directly from the unit. Place the lid on top. So, if you're going to print directly from the NT1, insert the supplied Bowden tube into one of the ports that best suits the routing to your printer. Now, if you aren't going to print directly from the NT1, just leave the Bowden tube off. Now, I have this ugly mustard PLA that's been sitting around for at least the last four years. Now, as you can see, it's pretty brittle. I'm going to load this as is on the Ender 3 V3 SE and see how it does. Or if it does at all. Let's find out. All right, for my test print, I'm going to go ahead and use this little piece. I typically use this when I'm testing out retraction settings. But this piece will do good for us if we're going to have wet filament. We'll, we should see some stringing. So I'm going to go ahead and increase the size on this so we have something to work with, something of significance. That's 200%. We should be able to see that pretty good. I'm going to be using the generic PLA settings. Uh, 
and I will do this use the same G code for both my before and after print so let's go ahead and slice this and we'll send this to the Ender 3 V3 SE and see what it does with wet filament we'll dry it up and we'll come back and reprint and see how it does with dry filament well now we have a baseline print it's got a lot of stringing and what looks to be under extrusion going on I'm going to go ahead and weigh the spool and then we'll put it into the fixed dry NT1 for eh, about six hours then we'll reweigh it and do another test print and we'll compare the two for results all right let's weigh it up 973 grams even all right we'll weigh this again after it's been dried and see what the difference is the screen lights up that's always a good sign the temperature and humidity are displayed at the top of the screen press the setting button and the icon for the temperature starts to flash indicating that the setting we are that is the setting that we are currently changing the temperature range on the NT1 is 40 degrees on up to 70 degrees. I'm going to set the temperature to 50 degrees by using the plus and minus buttons. Once I'm at 50 degrees, I'll click the settings button again to lock it in. To set the time, I'll press the settings button again. This time, the first two digits at the bottom of the screen begin to flash. The range for the time setting is 0 up to 48 hours. I'm going to go ahead and set the time for six hours. Pressing the button again will allow us to set the minutes. I'm going to go ahead and leave it at zero. I'll press the setting button one last time to exit the time settings. Let's get the filament into the dryer. All right, the temperature is still coming up and I'm going to go ahead and load the filament anyways. In this particular case, I'm going to be using this as a standalone drying unit. So I want to make sure that I have the heat shroud in place. If you are printing from the dryer and the filament is rolling, the use of the heat shroud isn't as important. But with the spool being stationary for an extended period of time, you don't want the underside of the filament deforming or melting. All right, our filament is done drying. It's been six hours since we put it in there. Let's pop this out. It's a little warm, not too hot. Uh, I'm going to throw this back on the scale, and we'll see how we do, see if it lost any weight. Then we're going to load it onto the Ender 3 V3 SE, and we'll run another test print using the same exact G-code that we used to this. We're not going to re-slice it. We're going to use what's already on the card. And that will give us a great comparison to how the filament did before putting it in the dryer and after it came out. So let's go ahead, put this on the scale, weigh it up, and get started. Okay, let's get this on fresh from the dryer onto the scale. 972 even. All right, so we did lose some weight from uh, removing water. This print definitely looks better, a lot better. I, mean, I see a few whiskers, but nothing like I see on this one. I would say that the Fix Dry NT1 did its job. I liked everything about this dryer. The size is perfect for standard two spools or one large three kilogram spool. The choice of the 10 ports makes this a winner for my K1 Max over here. I can run from one of the rear ports right up to the printer run out sensors on the back and still have the control panel up front. The dryer itself is quiet, very quiet. I was impressed. Now, if I had to pick a negative thing to say about this dryer it would be that it took longer to get up to temperature than I expected 
Now, in fairness, it might be because of the size of this large chamber. Also, during the six hour test print or the t drying test, it never did get below 21% humidity. Now, that's still within the acceptable range for drying filament. So, that's all there is to it. I mean, drier filament, better quality print. I would definitely recommend the NT1 filament dryer by Fix Dry. In fact, if you decide that this unit is for you, you can use promo code BILL10 for a 10% discount. This code will actually apply to all Fix Dry products. They have other dryers, but it does apply to all of their products. I'll post their link and, a, and the coupon code in the description. I hope you found this information useful. If you did, hit that like button and let me know down below in the comments. Smash that bell so you'll be alerted to new content in the future. Live your life one layer at a time. And if you haven't done it yet, please consider subscribing.